In this video, we're going to be talking about how to combine Newton's second law with our kinematic formulas. So first of all, we have a problem with a 50 kilogram person who jumps off a five meter tall diving board into the water until they come to a stop four meters down into the water. So we have three of our kinematic formulas that we can use here for accelerated motion. And we want to solve for the net force. If we want to solve for the net force, we will definitely be using F net equals m times a. Now how these problems work is you want to look at what variable is connecting this formula, Newton's second law, to our three kinematic formulas. And the answer is acceleration. So each one of these three is accelerated motion. So there's an a here, here, and here. So all three of these formulas can be connected to the f net equals m a formula in any specific situation. So if we take a look at this situation here, it's a multi-step problem. So this one is a tough example, but let's go ahead and take a look at what's happening here. We have a person jumping off from a five meter tall diving board, and then we're looking for the net force as the person is in the water. So we wanna figure out a few things. We wanna see if we can figure out um, how fast the person is jumping in the water. If we know their final velocity at the end, do we know their, uh, the time it takes for them to come to a stop? And then eventually looking for some kind of acceleration also. So we do definitely know four meters, which is our delta X or also known as a delta Y because it's in the vertical direction. So we know that the delta X equals four meters. So that's all we have as of now. And if it's bringing them to a stop, then we can go ahead and safely say that the final velocity is zero meters per second. Now, if you're working with any one of these three green kinematic formulas in the bottom, you're definitely gonna have to have three variables because each of them have four variables. So if you have three variables, then you're able to solve for the acceleration. So we have two. Um, it doesn't look like there's any way to solve for the amount of time it takes for the person to stop as we are right now with the variables that we have, but we can find the initial velocity diving into the water. Um, the reason we can do that is because we know that the person uh, goes off the diving board over here at zero meters per second. They go down and they fall with an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared because they're in free fall. And they do that across a displacement of negative five meters. Okay. And then actually it reminds me, this one is also negative four because it's going in the downward direction. So if we use all of these variables over here, we can figure out how fast the person is entering the water um, and solve for what's the VF for the initial portion of the problem while the person is falling through the air. And that final velocity of how fast they're moving through the air will give us the initial velocity going into the water. So if we take a look at our three uh, green kinematic formulas on the bottom and we're looking for a VF, um, we're going to have to use this third one over here, VF squared equals VI squared plus two A delta X. And we have VF squared equals zero squared plus two, negative 9.8, negative five. And that means V squared equals 98. Take the square root of both sides and then our VF equals 9.9 meters per second. And that's directed downward. So we're gonna go ahead and put the negative right in front of there. So that is gonna to translate to our VI for the second part of the problem. So where this one ends moving through the air is where this one starts moving through the water. So we have a VI of negative 9.9 meters per second. Um, and that's good because our goal is to find the acceleration because our acceleration is that connecting piece from our kinematic formulas to our F net equals MA. And if we know that we wanna solve for the net force as our final thing, we definitely want to solve for an acceleration because we already have a mass of 50 kilograms. 
So <clears throat> if we use these three variables, we can go ahead and solve for acceleration. And it looks like we're going to have to use our third formula one more time. This one right here, we have a V squared of zero, a VI squared of negative 9.9 9 squared plus 2A, and then our delta X is negative 4. So that's going to give us 0 equals 98.01 plus, and then I'll take the 2 and the negative 4, multiply those, which gives us a coefficient of negative 8 in front of the A. And then basically what we're going to do is subtract 98.01 from both sides, which cancels it here and sends it to the other side. And that equals negative 8A on this side still. Finish it off by solving for A um, by dividing both sides by negative 8. And then we have a final acceleration of 12.25 meters per second squared. Now we are pretty much done with our calculation. We want to finish off by using our F net formula. And we know that F net equals mass times acceleration. The mass of 50 kilograms was given in the initial question. And we have our net acceleration of 12.25 meters per second squared. We can go ahead and multiply those two. And then we get 612.5 newtons. So anytime you're combining um, Newton's second law with our acceleration formulas, remember that acceleration is going to be your connecting piece from one to the other. So either you're going to be solving for an A with one of these three green formulas and then putting it into this blue formula so that you can solve for a mass or a force, or you're going to do that or vice versa, which would be solving for an acceleration with F net equals MA. And then you're going to take your acceleration and place it into one of these green formulas to solve for one of those values, such as delta X, VI, VF, or T. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand and set up a second law in kinematic formula question. Thank you for watching and listening.